Okay, so far we've learned about four different types of math problems in chemistry. We have learned about converting between grams and moles. We've learned about percent composition. And the two new problems were the empirical formula when I give you the percent by mass. And the last is determining the molecular formula if I give you the empirical formula. Sure. Now, this worksheet, obviously not going to be collected. I give you a bunch of practice problems. And at the end, I've shown you how to solve these things. But I'd like to go through a few of the problems with you to make sure you understand what I'm talking about when I'm showing you how to solve these things. After we get done, you're going to have 13 problems to work on, all the various types here. And tomorrow, I'm not going to go through all 13 problems. So let's get good at a bunch of them so I can just solve some minor problems tomorrow. Our first problem is converting between moles and grams. Now you guys know that moles is how many things you have, and grams is the mass of how many things you have. And we can convert between either one by using the gram molecular mass. This is the thing that we looked up on the periodic table. So I'm going to go through a couple of the practice problems, and what you're going to see happening is you write down what you're given, whether it's moles or grams, you write that down first, then you write down the gram molecular mass, and then you look to see if you multiply or flip and divide. So let's take a look at the first one. What is the mass of 4.25 moles of water? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 4.25 moles of water. Now, the water, of course, H2O, 1.01 plus 1.01 plus 16 is 18.02 grams per mole. Per mole. And as we can see by this one, all we have to do is multiply across because our moles canceled out. And the answer is 4.25 times 18.02, which we know is 76.6 grams. Now, the second problem may or may not be a little trickier. The second problem says we have 17.5 grams of carbon dioxide. 17.5 grams times, do you remember carbon dioxide? Do you remember CO2? 12.01 plus 16 plus 16 is 44.01 grams per mole. Now in this one, of course, grams and grams are both on top. So we're actually going to flip this over and make it one mole over 44 0.01 grams. And now it becomes 17.5 divided by 44.01. And that is 0 0.398 moles. Now the last one's done the exact same way, except look, lithium sulfate. You're not just going to write down Li. You're not just going to write down SO4. You're going to remember that Li is plus 1 and SO4 is minus 2, so it's Li2SO4 as a formula. And we're going to do this the same way as we did the one above, where we're given grams and we need to find moles. Our second type of problem is percent composition by mass. This is the one we worked on earlier this week. What we need to do is we need to figure out the mass of the element we're looking for and then by, divide it by the mass of the total. So when I say, what is the percent by mass of carbon in calcium carbonate? Well, of course, the first thing you have to do is figure out what calcium carbonate is. Well, since calcium is Ca plus 2 and carbonate is CO3 minus 2, okay, so it's just CaCO3. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to divide the mass of all of the carbons, and there's just one carbon, and divide it by the mass of the entire thing. So the carbon, one carbon, you know is 12.01 grams. But the mass of the entire thing, calcium is 40.01, the one carbon is 12.01, and each oxygen is 16, 
and 16 times 3 is 48.00. And that totals up to 100.01 grams per mole. So, since we're looking for the carbon, that's 12.01, the entire thing is 100.01. And then we just multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent. And when we divide this out, we end up with right about 12%. So for the next one, we want calcium hydroxide. Well, calcium is plus 2, but hydroxide, OH, is minus 1. So I need two hydroxides. So the formula is really going to be CaOH2. So if we want the percent oxygen, we're going to have to take these two oxygens, 16 plus 16, 32.00, divided by the two oxygens, 16 and 16, the two hydrogens, 1.01 .01 plus 1.01, .01, and the one calcium, which is 40. And that totals out to 74.12 times 100. That's going to give me a percent of 43.17%. Again, it's the two oxygens over the entire mass. Last one, let's see if you can do this one on your own. I'll start you off. Nitrogen 1 oxide means nitrogen is in the plus 1 state. But oxygen, of course, is always minus 2. So we're going to need an extra nitrogen to cancel this out. The formula is N2O. So I want the percent by mass of nitrogen, both of the nitrogens, divided by the mass of the whole thing. See if you can do that one on your own, and then check the answer key. The third type of problem is the longest problem. You know this problem because you are given percents. The percents are in the problem, and you're asked for a formula. So, turn the percents into grams. Turn each one of the grams into moles by dividing by its own gram atomic mass. And then we look and see if we can find the simplest ratio. And remember, in class we said if you need to, divide all the answers by the smallest number, and the simplest ratio kind of pops out at you. Then you write the formula. So, let me show you how we do the first one. Let's determine the empirical formula, so our goal is a formula. If it's 23.08% magnesium, 30.77% sulfur, and 46.5% oxygen, so now we have three elements. Let's see how we're going to work this one out. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take 23.08 grams of magnesium, 30.77 grams of sulfur, and 46.515 grams of oxygen. Now, to turn this into moles, I'll divide it by the gram molecular mass of magnesium, which I look up on my periodic table. That's 24.31. A mole of sulfur is 32.07. And a mole of oxygen, which you may know by now, is 16. If we divide these three out, we are going to get 0 0.949 moles, 0 0.959 moles, and 2.88 moles. Now, some of you guys might be able to guess at this, this ratio, but if you're not sure, divide every one of these guys by 0.949. So this divided by 0.949, obviously, is just 1. This divided by 0.949 is 0.99 something something. It's really close to 1. And this divided by 0.949 is just a tiny bit less than 3. So now we know we have 1 magnesium, 1 sulfur, and 3 oxygens. The formula is MgSO3 magnesium sulfite. Now, try to do the next problem 
which you want to find the empirical formula of lithium, nitrogen, and oxygen using the exact same method we did here. And then check your answers on the last page of this packet. Our final problem is the short one, the one I like to do because I can do it quickly. Determining the molecular formula from the empirical formula. So what you're going to see in these problems is I give you the empirical formula and then I tell you the mass of the whole compound. So this 70 grams is made up of either one set of this or two or three or four sets of this. These guys add up to this guy here. And I've shown you kind of a shortcut way of figuring this out. Sometimes it's a little difficult for me to write out exactly how to do this problem. So the directions look like it's a lot harder than it really is. But here's what you're going to do. Again, the empirical formula is CH2. So the molecular formula is going to be CH2 or C2H4 or C3H6. And you can just keep adding these up until you hit 70, and then you've got your formula. But here's a shortcut. We know that the mass of CH2 is 12.01 plus 1.01 plus 1.01. So that's going to be 14.03. So how many 14.03s does it take to get to 70? 70, the whole mass, divided by the mass of one empirical formula. And we can get our answer here. And the answer comes out to be 4.98. That's pretty much five times. It's going to always end up being a whole number. It should be very, very close to a whole number. If it's not, check your numbers here. So we need five sets of CH2. So what we can do is we can take the C times 5, and the H's, since there are two of them, 5 times 2, there's 10, and there's our answer. Now, since this is a short one, I'll do the second one for you also. Unless you want to pause it and try it yourself and see how well you've done. Let's take a look at this. Here's our empirical formula. Here's our mass. That's a big molecule. But we'll add up CH2O. C, 12.01. Two H's, 2.02. .02, and the one oxygen, of course, is 16. So, we've got 12 plus 2 plus 16. And that's going to give me a grand total of... 30.03 grams for every mole. Well, the whole thing is 300 grams per mole. I'm going to divide that by 30.03, and some of you guys could probably already figure out that that's going to be just under 10. So I actually need 10 sets of this to make my molecule. So the one carbon times 10 is C10. The two hydrogens times 10 is H20, and the one oxygen times 10 is O10. So there you go. That's how we solve these problems. So when you're doing your worksheet, your 13 problems that you're going to start right now, look to see what kind of problem it is. Look at this sheet here, and here's examples of the grams and moles type question. If it looks like this, it's a grams and moles question. If it says, what is the percent by mass, then surprisingly, it's a percent by mass composition. If it gives you the percents, that's the longer problem, where you got to go percents to grams, grams to moles, and figure out the ratio to write the empirical formula. These types of problems will also say empirical formula, but there's no percents in it. It gives you the mass of the whole molecule, and it gives you the empirical formula. So these are the short ones. So you should be able to tell from the list of 13 questions which ones are which types of problems, and then use this guide to solve for them. Good luck, and we'll go over these tomorrow.